What's up guys, welcome, this is a new old school series. Last week we talked about what happens in 600 No Limit. Um, we saw the first 25 hands uh, of the year that we played there of the big pots. We started playing 3-6 at the end of the year, so most of these hands are from those days, uh, like October and later. October, funnily enough, also when I played my first EPT in 2005, which was EPT London. I can't believe that we played an EPT after one and a half years. Especially when you look at the level of play. Uh, what we're going to be doing today, I made a few adjustments. I took out the full ring fucking hands. I think on 3-6 it's not really uh, of any importance. There's some sick hands on 10-20 that I remember very clearly from back in the day. But 9-handed became less and less uh, popular. I started playing less and less myself. Um, I just didn't want to have a lot of set first over pair hands in there. And because there's a full table of people, people tend to play a lot more tight. So you're going to see big pots that have a lot of strong versus strong and we want to have some action. So these are the top 25 pots of 3-6 in 2005 and they're all going to be action bangers, um, I hope at least. I mean there's going to be sets in here too of course but like look at this. Immediately we start with a 3 hand and one Like I said last time as well, next week we're going to be looking at the heads up pots which should be even more action, right? Heads up, both players uh, will be playing marginal hands. You're going to get into very dicey spots. And I started playing more and more heads up in these days. So that's going to be very interesting to look at. Um, yeah. Boom. Boom. All right. So still just raising or just flatting with these. I wasn't really uh, calling with these yet. 12. Okay. I don't mind it. I don't mind it. You can go either way. I mean... Honestly, I flat or I call a lot with this as well. Like this is a typical hand that I would like to check raise and then check on the turn. Um, I'm fine with flat calling as well. Especially if you flat call this guy, I might think with ace four, you know what? Fuck it. And punt it in because he only has 20 big blinds. So um, if, you, if you flat call here, then uh, like I said, he could be shoving. He can also just be shoving a five and it's very unlikely he will do so when he sees this. Because now he's like, okay, so there is a hand out there um, that he wants to play against. Um, yeah, but he folds. He calls. 56. I like it. No reason to go much bigger. And we get min raised. The classical, classical min raise. Dear Lord, how many min raises are we going to see? Um, at this point, I really advise to just call. If you go all in, you make a bluff out of your hand. What does that mean, you make a bluff out of your hand? It means that you do not want to get called. Simple, right? If we go all in here and he calls, we're usually screwed. If we call, we could still have the best hand. Unlikely in this case, I think, but um, obviously with the flush draw here, um, we're just gonna call. Uh, we get we get 5.25 to one. We only need 16% equity. If he has aces, um, then we have Five um, plus um, uh, nine is uh, 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 14. 14 outs, so that gives us 29%. So very, very easily. Uh, if he has a straight, we also have the equity because then we just have flush outs. Um, and uh, if we do hit, we're also going to make money. So easiest call in the world here on the turn. Is this... <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. In before all in, you know. All right. Diamond. Now this is, becomes interesting. I think that... Because the king doesn't really offer any danger to two pair hands. For instance, if somebody has a set of fives here, his hand strength stays relatively the same. Um, because I didn't raise, right? I didn't raise before the flop. Unlikely I have kings. Um, there was a lot of action on the flop, so it's pretty unlikely I have a diamond. What I would really love to see here is me just checking and check raising all in. Um, great. So, on the other hand, we're probably going to get paid as well. <laughs> By set of deuces. All right. So if you look back on the turn, there's very little chance that somebody's bluffing here. So I think that shoving is pretty good. But you know, from a from a kind of like balance perspective, I think it's pretty good to check because then all the times where you have a weaker hand, you'll be a little bit more protected. But that's all a little bit more advanced stuff. Look at this. Look at us opening up our game. Jack ten motherfucking offsuit. I always feel like we start cursing at the second hand. All right. Thank you all for your comments again, by the way. Uh, we take all of this stuff into account. Um, we go over all the comments. Like I said a few weeks ago, I was traveling, so I didn't really get to uh, read any of them. But uh, we're going to get back on the 
replying train as you saw in the last video and uh, really start and keep connecting with you guys because I think it's really cool. I really like talking about these hands. I really like hearing what you guys have to say about it. And I especially like when you guys talk about all the, the similarities to what it is these days. Um, yeah, I just it's just fucking funny. It's just fucking funny. Somebody also sent me a message and they said something like they used to always watch me uh, play online during these times and that they really, really enjoyed uh, having a closer look into what the hands actually were and the whole tendencies online so we're just building a nice little time graph and we're gonna involve some coaching sessions for you while we while we do it so jacked an offsuit really good to see that i start raising these hands i definitely started upping my aggression uh, back then because um i just realized from playing heads up that if you're just aggressive you're gonna win the pot a lot and if you want to rep a strong hand you're gonna have to raise preflop because if you do not make action, you do not represent a strong hand. So I think it's much, much better to come in and raise these type of hands than it is to just flat call and see flops. Uh, this guy has the most ridiculous 3-bit sizing I've ever seen in my life. So we're just going to call that. This guy is us like a year ago. Oh my god, are we going to see the first one of the first floats? Oh, raise! God damn. Not sure if PLO or hold him. This is a typical board that gets attacked a lot in PLO. But um, this is awesome. Honestly, uh, what makes me really happy about this hand is we have the jack of spades. We have two cards that connect to the top card on the board. What does that mean, guys? That means that if the turn is a king or nine or eight or an ace, we make straight draws, which is very important. This is not a quality that a hand like 7-5 most of the time has. You know, this is, has better potential for that because it also has high card value. Um, or let's say a hand, well, like a 6 for instance, right? A6, for instance, doesn't have any have any uh, possibilities to make a straight draw on the turn. Also, if it's a spade, we have an emergency spade in our hand, and that's what uh, and that's what makes this a good hand to bluff with. If we wouldn't do it with this hand, we could do it any fucking time. So it's always good to have that little bit of equity there. We get called. Oh my god, it's dicey. That is not a straight or a flush draw. Are we just gonna go for this? Oh my god, look at this. This is commitment. This is hard and commitment to the game. Get fucking wrecked. God damn it. I don't think we have any outs here. Seven and so. You see? You see how important that high card is? Please. The nastiest shit ever made. Fuck. God. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, it just shows, just shows that making a move with a hand that has some sort of emergency equity is better. Really good call by him. Um, I guess he didn't go for it. He really likes his sevens, huh? Re-raising pre-flop. Bet calling the flop and calling a jam on the turn. I really can't blame him too much on this board, though. Um, I mean, if I had a queen, I'd be playing it really fucking fast, right? And people don't usually play hands that are super strong really fast. Um, yeah, interesting, interesting, interesting. Good to see that I opened those hands. I think that m more and more as time goes on, we're going to see uh, we're gonna see pots develop... Um, in a more normal way, like what you guys are used to right now when you're playing. Um, well, maybe not yet, but there's going to be more, you know, raising solid hands, three betting with some uh, bad hands. Um, I mean, I don't mind the raise here. I, uh, it's a very dry board. My fives could be good. If I call six, the turn is an eight and he bets 30, I'm going to have to fold a lot. Um, this way I kind of protect, get some value, push the other guy's equity out. It's very important to push out a hand like queen 10 here from the big blinds. Just <laughs> out flopped, yes, maybe out turned. 60, 120. Flat call, you're in position, please. All right. Maybe this, I mean, in all honesty, guys, we just see this, we just see this happen over and over. I just respond to people being strong. This, again, the classic min raise, the classic I have something, let's put some more money in the pot. I don't really feel comfortable otherwise. Um, so where people just want to get as much money in as quickly as they can when they feel comfortable about a hand um, when they're just going to lose a lot of value against shittier hands um, so I must have just th thought here alright so this guy raises he has something let's get the money in and it just fucking works every time alright maybe this guy thought the same Maybe this guy thought the same. 
man, what a turn. That's brutal. All right, let's do this like we did last week with the AIDS. Nope. Okay. All right, too bad, too bad, but um, <laughs> I guess he did have something. It is interesting, though. We're going to keep looking at that. I really wonder when I'm going to three bet a lot of these. There we have Recruel. Rec Recruel again. Jesus. Hi, Byron. I just like to say your name. 60. Uh, I do believe that this is kind of the time where we would flood call with Ace King. I would hate that, especially seeing this guy only having 30 big blinds. Get the fucking money in. If you flat here, somebody calls here with Jack-10, that's a disaster. That hand has 40% against you. It is a disaster. Oh, look at that. I'm smart. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, I don't care. Let's go, Dan Glebitz. Dan Glebitz gives no fucks. So I made it enough to put this guy all in. Oh, lordy lords. Um, I really wouldn't mind shoving here, to be honest. Hmm. Shove. Nice. Okay, that's good at least. That's good. I mean, I could real. It, it would be pretty good uh, if you look at the how much money is left and how big the pot is. Let's say you do have a hand like aces or kings or queen x or whatever. If you just check the flop, there's some chance he's gonna bomb the turn all in. Um, this is all a bit different nowadays. Um, I'll definitely just get the money in to get his stack, get his thing adds up. Heart. God damn it, jacks, huh? Aces, huh? Fuckers. This is the kind of the standard play. Let's see if there's an ace or a king and let's go for it. Um, that you just see people do a lot. 3 9. Evil Jedi? What did. What? <coughs> what is this? I'm so proud of myself. Look at this. Alright. Alright, in all seriousness, maybe I'm not so proud of myself. 3 9, maybe not the hand you want to pick. Okay, I'll say this. I honestly will say this. I think that one of my best... Fuck, I got stabbed by a mosquito. God damn it. It hasn't been since Panama City. God fucking damn it. Um, I feel that uh, one of my best trades uh, when I was a young poker gun, or still, is game dynamics. So what is a new piece of information? How is that going to have an effect on somebody's opinion or somebody's strategy? Which is kind of, if you look at it, it's kind of logical because it kind of comes from StarCraft or something, right? Um, I Somebody scouts your base. Uh, are you going to do a marine drop with what he sees? Or what is your strategy based on what your opponent has seen? How do you respond to that? I mean, I've played thousands of hours of StarCraft, so I think that I kind of trained myself in a, in a way um, to to be better at that. So I kind of honed my skills that way. So I honestly think that when I see a hand like this, I just thought, well, fuck it. This is the right time to start crushing. All right, so my opponent felt the same. Uh, not, a, not a flop I would normally bet. It's too coordinated. Um, a lot of hands are still safe, like nines, even sevens may feel slightly safe, you know. No jack is gonna fold. There's 10-9, queen-10, queen-9, which my call. Um, it's just... There's a lot of hands with future potential as well. If you have sevens and the turn is a six, pretty good for you, right? So, he calls. That's a three. Honestly, I think you have to go all the way here. Because because what I said, if you're going to go for this, <laughs> the thing is we don't block any of the high card hands. So, it's like, <laughs> wow, this is, this is quite special. Uh, so, this is November. This is 22nd of November. So... This is really, really when I started playing shorthanded, heads up, starting tables, fucking firing, beasting. This, I think that this four months is one of the biggest learning curves in my poker career from the summer up until this point when I just ramped up. I mean, this is a few months after I was grinding 1 2 every day, right? And we're already at 3 6, and this bankroll was skyrocketing. Um, I also believe that in this same month, oh no, two months before this, I won like three or four big tournaments. Uh, the the five to ten and the hundred rebuy I won three days in a row so I really started getting to my own in the poker grind I would love for a bet here if you just bet 120 here you can put the rest in on the river barring it's not a club probably so um, like I don't I don't know if you want to go for it on a nine of clubs or something but um, I think that it's it's pretty cool because we said it on the flop people could be calling a lot. Um, I still think that they can fold a lot of those calls on this turn because it doesn't really give them any straight draws unless they had fives or sixes. No, that doesn't still doesn't give them a straight draw. 
All right, I need to sleep more. Um, boom, nice. I like it. Really good sizing. Leaves you with a good bet on the river if they call. God damn it. You see, if they call, the pot is now 539. You can still bet 450 on the river. Excellent planning of the hand. And if if the river is like a king or an ace or whatever, we can just go for it. <laughs> Oh man, this, oh, this is, no, gotta go all in, we gotta go all in at least, that's too bad, that's too bad, that's funny, but that's too bad, we missed a chance here, we talked about this last time, I mean, if the draws miss, if he has a miss draw, he's not gonna call anyway, um, I don't know, you know, I always, I always, like, my first reaction is always the way I would play or think about a hand right now. And my second reaction is then always something like, what could have happened back then? What was I thinking? What was the correct strategy? You know, how did the player pool play? Whatever. So I think that I think that when I look at this hand, maybe I was targeting more to get called by five, sixes, and nines and stuff, which is a big big part of his range still or eight X. So Maybe not really bad. It would be terrible with a bluff, though. With a bluff, it would be terrible because somebody gets uh, three and a half to one. See this? This means they need to be uh, a little bit better than one out of four times and they'll cash and they'll make money. So if this guy thinks, am I uh, good a little bit more than one out of four times, then he's just crushing. And he probably is. So as a bluff would be terrible, that doesn't mean that we should change it. Uh, you should only think about that when you play against good players when you play against bad players do whatever the fuck you want in that situation because it's first of all unlikely you're going to see them again it's unlikely they're going to adjust their game as well oh man that's tough bro god this is this is when you all right no let's not be too toxic i was like this is when you type a question mark in the chat all right let's go 18 this king this is a perfect flop high card and two low cards lots of full equity uh, bad 60 good flat or get it in whatever there we go again guys we both have something high five nice hands gg um i don't know i, I really maybe i should make do you guys think it would be i mean this is a lot of work so i'm probably not gonna do it but you would almost ask yourself you could make like you could look at all the hands where um somebody raises the turn and i three bet all in and then go over all those hands and see how often i actually got called or not um because we're seeing like some of the biggest pots but this could just be this could just be that we're missing out on a ton of value but then again realistically it's every time the same fucking thing right bet min raise shove call so this is just a thing that happened people just bet made hands i feel like my made hand is a little bit better than theirs I'm just gonna get it in. Cool. So he had a he had a, a flush that was less big. Oh, hello. <laughs> we had a lot of Jack Nines last time too, remember? Good. I'm very glad I call a three bets here. Hundred blinds deep. Definitely need to call three bets with these hands. 120. Did anybody say I know you have an overpair? Yes, we did. That... You gotta be kidding me, right? This is just stupid. What what the fuck? How you know what makes me so mad about it is that who bets 120 with top set here, huh? And guys, you could say, well, that means it's good because you didn't expect it. No, that doesn't mean it because I still need something to battle it, right? Like what 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 is what does the guy want me to have? Ace nine? Oh god. Club? Nope. Dead. Alright. That's too bad. That's too bad. Hey, nine seven. All right. Oh, lead leading worked a lot. Seventy eight. Are we just gonna shove it in? I mean, I really wouldn't mind it. I actually think it's pretty good. Yeah. What the fuck does this mean? <laughs> I'm a true professional, guys. Whoa, three way. Are you serious? Oh my god, what are we up against? There's no way. What? I can't even come up with hands. Look at what happened pre-flop. Like, I'm trying to see... I'm trying to see the guys. Well, I think that one of these guys... Okay, so there's going to be a 9 in there, right? Like an ace-9 type deal. Maybe 10s and ace-9. 10s and ace-9. That's going to be my guess. Alright, so we have a draw. I can respect that. We have a draw on a 9. Not too bad. 
King. Plow. Nice. Nice. Hey, that's Chris Moneymaker. <laughs> Chris, what were you doing? <laughs> that's Chris Moneymaker. <laughs> Look at that. God damn, Chris. What the fuck is this? This is not how you win a WCP, Chris. God damn it, man. This is fine. Fine with this. You old silly you. I'm gonna send him a fucking message about this one. I'm actually gonna send him... Alright, cool. That's hilarious. That is fucking hilarious. He's just like, oh, well, let's do it. <sighs> God damn it, man. What are you doing, Chris? What are you doing? You know what's a funny story, which is actually, this is purely the power of the mic. Because Chris is not here to defend himself. Because... Um, I won the tournament leaderboard on Stars. It's a weekly thing, and uh, if you won it, you could play heads up against a PokerStars Pro. And if you win, you got a thousand dollars. And if the Pro won, the money would be stacked on top for the next week's challenger. So I won, right? I was super happy. So I, I had the most tournament points in a week on Stars, um, and I had to play Chris Moneymaker, and I beat him without losing a hand. And I showed him like four bluffs or something and then uh i joined i remember i remember this exact session because i was playing i was on all kinds of tables and he joined a table and people joined because they want to play with him obviously and i joined and then he said something like oh god not you and then hands like this happened i very clearly remember this this is cool for me too right it's like i mean chris moneymaker's a legend it was really fun for me to play with him. I was very happy to like play them, play that leaderboards. I mean, th those are all really important things on the poker journey. It's like milestones that you remember. Oh man, Chris fucking moneymaker. Jesus. All right, six, Pedro, we get raised, we're gonna call, turn as a spade, he bets, we raise, he calls, we shove, he calls, and he's dead. Nice. Why do I leave the 61 again? I really hope that you guys see the mistake in this. How do I think this is the correct sizing? What's the difference here? What's the difference? Why do I leave the $61 out there? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's a maybe it's a psychological thing, honestly. Maybe I really thought that I was going to get called more because people still have money to play with. This is something that happens, right? This could have been a something psychological. I just don't know if I agree with it. 4x with aces. Please don't bet more than 50 Nice, nice, nice laugh, flat, yes, thank you. I'm okay with raising now. At this point, you know that the guy has something, right? We go back to, uh, oh, look at you. Oh, 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 oh. Nice. Look at me. God damn it. Learning how to slow play. Milk it out till the river. Seven always oh, coming. Seven. Seven. <laughs> LA River. Out. 138, he raises. Let's look at this. Do we have to be afraid of a straight here? 24, 24. Everybody checks. I mean, I, I guess he can have a straight. But the problem is we can also have a straight. So when I say something like, oh, he could have a straight, it not so much means that, um, oh, I'm super afraid of a straight always and I'm not going to go for value here. It also means I could very well have a straight. And that makes me so much stronger when I go for it that you think to a point like, what are you trying to get value from uh, with your set there? But, um, so that's why I'm curious what I'm going to do here. 600s. Wow. We always just seem to get paid off by two pairs or sets. This is this happens time after time again. People think, ah, oh, Ken's really flat here. and oh, I'm going to put in a tiny raise. Let's see. Let's stack that. Let's uh, let's tax that ace six, ace four. Yeah, it's really tough. I mean, it probably gets an insta call from ace four and ace six, so I'll give him that. Still ace queen in my range though. Back then we never used to raise that. But what the fuck is this? This is just never a bluff. Very bad river call. Oh, if he would have a seven. All right. Ha <laughs> ha. Um. Even this, even this is super light. So that's just tells you how strong his raise is. If you if you find some action on it, I like all these short-handed situations. I really like. We're gonna we're getting to a really good spot. All right, it's way too small. You really need to make it like eighty here. But all right. Wow! Look at the check. Jib baited. Get the fuck out of my house. Bye bye.
Look at that check. Look at that balanced fuck you. Plow. Reloaded. Yes, you have no idea how right you were. Wow. All right. Cool. Not bad. And again, shorthanded. I like it. All right, so it's raise. I like it. Very, very dry board. You want to protect and you want to also check raise draws. So if you want to check raise draws, which is the weakest thing you can have, right? Because draws are usually high card hands. So it's the weakest thing you could have in your range. So, um, <laughs> well, I mean, you could just do it with air balls. I guess deuce three of diamonds here would be weaker than a draw. Pair draw for the win. Uh, size down now will be really good. Give people with straight draws, hard draws, the time to catch up. Uh, this is a little big, but wow, this is perfect. This is perfect because what we talked about last time against hand against preposterous. If we if we shove here, we're gonna get 100% call by uh, King X. Very big chance he would just get a seven all in. And how often is he just gonna have a random seven? You know, he's not gonna have a seven with a flush draw because it's the is the heart. It's a different one is the king and eight of hearts, right? So he's not gonna have the seven with a draw. Is he really gonna check raise it with like a seven here, or seven six? And if he does, and the turn is this, then I would hundred percent assume he's gonna get it in against the flush draw and stuff as well. So, um, I think this is beautiful because now we have three eights with two sevens, and he has two kings with three sevens. And you always need to look at the three card part of a full house to see what beats what, right? So, all in call GG. That's why AIDS beat that. Awesome. 66. I really like it. I really like it. Um, this is just good sizing because... d -William, wow. Dave, that's Dave Bellumer. That's also an old school name uh, that I hung out with a bit. Um, this is just really good sizing. Um... 3x would be 54 it's two big blinds above that honestly um we would be picking uh, maybe maybe 72 these days but honestly this is just a really good bet especially with this stack in here um i'm so happy to start seeing sizes that i would still pick these days we get called ace king this she can bet a lot lower um yeah that's just also some of this nice all right then we can just flat not bad not bad okay why do i think that flatting in this case is better than in the earlier ones where we said okay we both have anything the most important thing here is that we have in the other ones we had sets so we didn't block any of the top cards on the board here we have both the ace and the king i really like drawing the king uh we, we have both the ace and we have the king um so that blocks all the hands that he could pay us off with also we keep talking about info raising what if this guy thinks on this board, hey, I'm gonna raise my ace nine or ace ten, and if he goes all in, then I know I'm beat. That is very dangerous to go all in against those hands because they might fold it. What happens here is they think on a turn, uh, um, um, they kind of readjust their plan and they'll just say, I think that he, uh, I think that he could have clubs as well or king jack or king queen. I'm just gonna get my ace nine in for protection. So they kind of lose. The purpose of the hand what would be really good is if he would check and then make that call but uh, so we're just gonna check and he checks mm, eight now we just gotta go for value and we get paid off and he has you gotta be kidding me so the guy flats with fucking ace is pretty flop gets the most dreamiest of boards except for ace king king gets the most dreamiest of boards Fucking raises me on the flop. Checks it. Wow. All right. 30. Ragda. He won the first W Coop ever. I know. I have all these facts. Hey, Fast Eddie. That's the guy I talked to a while ago. I, pl I battled this guy a lot. And there is Liquid Frost. Um, this is good to see. So I'm starting to isolate limpers with weak hands. We saw it last time with the Queen Deuce. I really hope we're not gonna end this hand the same way, just like the Queen Deuce, you know what I mean? Because the Queen Deuce we went all in with. <laughs> Let's say. How much is that, Dylan? 154? How much do I have in? 30? I call. I call. 
All right, let's see what this life. I like the show. Oh God. <laughs> no way he called with tens. Oh man. Ninety-four percent. All right. So what? What? So his part. Flop comes out. 111. His opponent. I'm all in. How much is that? 446. Pocket tens. Checks for a spade. No spade. Must have a 10 high flush. <laughs> Call. Oh, Lord. This is one of the poorest played hands that we've seen so far in these fucking series. By both people. My pre-flop call is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, you're gonna need a lot better hands than Kington offsuit for that. You need suited hands for that if you're ever gonna gamble like that. Wow. Rugged though. Rugged is crazy. Oh yeah, I have a good Rugged story. Where, um, where the EP is Edgar... Edgar... Skierstad or some. I don't know. Um, so we're, we're at... Uh, EPT Copenhagen and my friend was at the table with Ragda and then um, he's like don't don't raise my big blind don't raise my big blind I'm telling you don't raise my big blind and it's and everybody's like okay at the table whatever so then somebody raises his big blind and he's like I will go all in in the dark if somebody raises my big blind so somebody raises his big blind he doesn't do anything he just says I'm all in the guy snap calls with aces and he crushes the guy's EPT main event with 8-3 offsuits and he like turns to pair. The guy with aces has to fucking leave the table and he's like, I told you guys to not raise my big blind up. Well, fuck you. So Ragnar was a boss. It's funny. You know, it's probably not the best you can approach an EPT tournament, <laughs> but it's funny. So... So I keep adjusting my mic. This is a very good mic. It's a nice new mic. Yes. All right. So this is a very funny hand. Eight seven. Let's see. Everybody limpy limpy. How the fuck? You know, when I see this, it's like, what is it? Turn eight. How the fuck does it pocket big? Hundred and two. Oh man. This is where you fold. I'm not kidding you. This is where you fold. What are you gonna make here? Even if you just flat. Please don't call in. <laughs> Alright, so there's a one card straight out there. I don't know how you're gonna make money. Yeah, this is so you're pretty much saying I wanna chop the pot or lose. 8 7, 8 7. You see, this is a big fucking problem. Put a fucking heart to punish me. God damn it, that's so tilting though. This. What a shit show, man. I mean, alright, I think what's very important, I think what a lot of people do wrong, you cannot look at the absolute hand strength. You have to look at the relative hand strength. So what that means is, I think, I have a straight, I can't fold a straight. But then you think, why not? Because somebody bets four times the pot, he got called by somebody. I'm not going to make any money from anything worse. And it's a one card straight, it's not a two card straight. I mean, if the nine was a deuce and this guy bets a hundred, you can slam dunk all in, of course. Not just be a, because you have the nuts. Or let's say you have seven five and there's no ten, right? Ten seven is the nuts, but you have a two card straight. You can get paid off by two pairs, sets, anything. You're just not gonna get paid off here. Like, what is gonna call it? Tell me a fucking hand here that's gonna call you that doesn't include a seven. And then you're always gonna chop the main. You're always gonna chop because one of these two fucking guys has a seven, and the other could have like ten nine of hearts and not give a fuck or something. Or fucking king jack of hearts or something i don't know wow this is very bad honestly just fold here on the turn four times pot oh i call this folds this is very bad wow this is brutal though but yeah that's terrible hey. <laughs> what is that this is the same session. Is it the same session? Let's look at the times. So this is 6.39 p.m. This is 7.20. This is half an hour later. Apparently, we did something good in that half an hour. Could be a different hand. No, we would have seen it. I'm so puzzled right now. 
whatever i guess it doesn't matter but this this this, there has to be some oh my god there has to be some (laughs) no oh my god the darkest tilt of all guys this is half an hour later do you guys think i was steaming a little bit or no must have just won some smaller pots you know i mean half an hour you can play like 30 40 hands so i must have won some three four hundred dollar pots played very aggro and thought i could get value this way or i'm just tilting this is hilarious though pimp rider that's the guy who called us with the jack 10 uh, on jack 10 9 8 with three diamonds last week to uh, just start raising these hands 60 sure i don't know is this going too fast for you guys if i do a click 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 like do you guys follow the action here or click click I don't know. Maybe I need to slow that down a little bit. Let me know. 76 raises. You're usually going to be in trouble here. That's a pretty bad turn. But we obviously can't fold in these days. Queen Jack. Yeah, what can we say? Um, Yeah. I mean, can you bet fold a turn? I don't know. Maybe. It's one of the worst cards, right? Jack. Jack and a king, probably one of the worst cards. And a heart, of course. I mean, a king of heart would be absolutely terrible. You gotta wonder, right? It's like, what is he shoving? Is he really shoving something that you crush? King, queen of hearts? King, jack of hearts? I mean, they would have a lot of outs, right? They would have three threes. Uh, they would have five pair outs. <laughs> five pair outs, so that's eight. Uh, three gutters. That's 11, and then 9 uh, flush draw outs. So that's 20 outs. So that would be 41% <laughs> against your hand with King Queen of Hearts or King Jack of Hearts. Not ideal. Not ideal in the least. Yeah, I don't know. Honestly, I'm very. Honestly, I think these days. Fuck, man, I'm not gonna touch this hand. I don't know. Because I was gonna say these days, but these days people are good enough to shove hands like Ace Jack suited, Ace Jack of Hearts, Seven Eight of Hearts on the turn. When a lot of hands that were good on the flop all of a sudden get weaker. Also, this bet size just doesn't really indicate that there's a super strong hand. I don't know, man. I really feel like just being a payoff wizard here. I also kind of like check calling the flop more, to be honest, because this can happen. Like, I mean, look at the hand that hand cards on the turn that put us in trouble, right? Any heart. I mean, that really diminished the value of your hand greatly. Um, an 8, Jack, Queen, King, Ace even, because you're going to get paid off less easy. Even though somebody could have Ace, I flush throw, but any heart. So, 7 is not really an issue, 6 neither. But So, that's a, that's pretty that's pretty intense. That's a pretty intense turn that you're going to be facing. You know, if if one of the bad turns comes and you just auto stack off, why are you check raising? I don't know. Feels very spewy to be honest with you. Raise. All right, so we're still flatting suited today, which is fine. Morphling? Oh my god! Dot that's why. Hello. Ace hundreds, hundreds. At least I don't fucking raise. Wait, he threw better, right? Yeah, 48. We call very standard. One or two, call. Ooh, check. Oh my god. I mean, there's spades there, I guess. Oof. 38%. So, we're getting one and a half to one. I mean, honestly, like these spots are closer than you think. So, let's look at it. Um,. How much equity do you have? What's the most likely hand he has here? Ace, king, and ace, queen, right? So let's look at ace, king, and ace, queen. We need a six or a heart to beat them. So that's 12 outs. So we're on the turn. 12 outs times two is 24 plus 1%. 25%. That's lacking a bit. I don't think you can call here. I mean, okay, how do we do against spades, right? Against spades, uh, let's say they have a spades with a gutter um, and one of those... One of those is no good because it, you know, if the ten of hearts hit, we make a straight. So let's say they have king queen of spades or something. They have three twelve. We do really good against that because then they have twenty five percent equity. I mean, you got to take that into your average calculations, right? Because then, if you look at that, we have seventy five percent, seventy five percent equity. 
Uh, so yeah, it's thirty-seven and a half percent equity. So if if you think that they have um, king queen of spades as often as they have is king queen queen ten, king ten of spades that sort of thing or eight seven of spades nine x of spades, who has a little bit more equity? If they have that just as often as they have ace king ace uh, queen ace jack, aces jacks, then you can call. But God. It's a tough one, man. You see, like, how important it is when you look at the math of things? Because you just need to make... All you need to do in poker is decide if I make this play a thousand times, will I make money? It's not so much about, you know, what happened this time or sometimes I'll win. I mean, you know the percentages. You you can build ranges like that. Okay, you know. I mean, most of it's going to be an estimation. Like, how often do I think that he has this? Um, how many combinations are there, Right. I mean, if we're talking about ace-king and ace-queen combinations, there's a lot. And if we're talking about king-ten, king-queen of spades, queen-ten of spades, there's three, right? So he's going to have more ace-king, ace-queen, which I do think that makes this a fold. I really do think that this is a fold. <sighs> wow. <laughs> All right. Pretty bad, though. Uh, again, I think that we're looking at absolute hand strength too much. I think they were just looking at, I have an ace with another flush draw. How the fuck do I fold? Well, we just we just calculated why you should fold. We just calculated why you should fold. Very interesting. Very interesting spot. Asana dumb. 60. Nice call. Call. A uh, bet. Call. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So what we saw earlier, this I think this is three weeks ago. What we saw is that we floated ace 10 and then we bet called the turn like a true boss. We bet 100 here and called an all in. Are we just going to rip it in? Check. Okay, so I really thought it was good here. Bet. Holy shit. God damn it. I'm never good in these spots. What are you doing? Come on, man. I mean, I. This is really bad card to call on because uh, look at the hands that get there, right? Queen 10, Jack 10, Queen Jack. Um, 7 6, 10 7. Like a, a lot of hands that could be tempted to 3 bet. Ace 10, they all get there. 10 is a really bad card. If, if you did it on like a, a 5 or lower, I would really get it. If, uh, Ace Queen 5, Ace Queen 5 3, Deuce 8 9, 4. Those those would be cards I could see myself heroing on, but here just too much too much random shit gets there. So I think this is a pretty bad call, but I don't know, man. What can I say? I really do like the fact that I'm making calls like that. Nice queen. Let's try this shit again. Preposterous again. Wow, I played a lot against these guys. But don't raise, please. Yeah, this is. This, guys, is a typical example of spazzing. You make a move because you think you're going to be in an easier spot if somebody just falls. I'm just going to take it right here. I raise. And you see what the problem is there? You just set yourself up. Um, you set yourself up for a bigger pot, which means a tougher decision. Yeah, whatever. I don't know, man. What's the best case scenario here, guys? A fucking ace of spades? Jesus Christ. Even that has 33 or whatever percent. <laughs> nice dudes very fucking nice this is atrocious absolutely atrocious very very poorly played also with the jack there's a two pair combination right it's so different if you're up against if it's queen jack three or queen eight three or queen seven deuce whatever so different so different even if you have like because also think about if it's queen queen seven deuce then he could have nines with a spade and he's just like, you know what? Fuck you, right? Either you have the ace of spades and I'm ahead or you have a queen or a set and I can still hit a spade. And, you know, somebody could fold. But here it's just, there's no fucking way that happens. There's no fucking way. God, I hate this hand. All right, it's time for some uh, oh, limping sixes. I really hope we're going to stop doing that. This is 10 December 2005. Big Hulk's not going to see this one coming, though. And we raise. I like that, actually. I still think that's pretty good. Oh. I think you can bet small here, though. Because think about what a small bet does for you. Hey, check kills. Again, all dumb. Ha, <laughs> ha. 
Uh, oh man, I don't understand these small bet sizings. If this guy, if this guy has a hand like queens, whatever. So, what hands is this guy calling the flop with? Let's start from the beginning. If we raise and this guy doesn't trust us or you have good hands, what hands is this guy calling us with? Um, any pair above a six, um, any pair above a six, any nine, good ace highs. Those are three big groups of hands that he's going to call us with and some mixed 10 eight, seven eight shit in there, right? Turn is an ace. What's the easiest way to make money against kings, queens, jacks, and tens? Bet small, right? You could check. But you're just going to get one street on the river then anyway, so you don't lose anything against them to do it now. Just bet small. How, much, how do you make more money against 9x? Bet. How do you make more money against ace x? Bet. What do you do against the straight draws? You can discount those. Of course, you're going to win a bit. If you check the turn, they're going to bluff the river or they could improve. So that's a, that's a reason to check. But um, I think that you have a really strong hand. You're very far from getting it all in. I really think you need to go for value. Also... Because if you bet the turn, you can get the whole stack. If you wait till the river and they bet and you shove, you look like you just slow played a full house or ace nine or whatever. You just look like you slow played something. So you look so much weaker by starting the, building the pot on the turn than you do on the river. And that's weird because the thing that you're trying to achieve is look weak. But then you get to the river and you're like, fuck, I look really strong right now. So I'm really curious to see what happens on the river. 200 shove i mean still gotta go for it if he has like a random nine aces wow that's fucking great it's good for you hulk good for you fucker um i really like betting the turn though because i think that if you over slow play you just look really strong in the end like i say all right 5x a bit tough a bit strong but doable raises calls interesting bet call Four is a really good card, cancels out some two pairs, makes it less likely he has a uh, set of fours, very much less likely. I don't think he has a set, he would just check raise eternal and, and yeah, here we just got a call. The only thing is going to be really fucked up is five, four or something, but four, six. Wow, I can't believe he played it that passively. Because like, if you're going to make action on this flop, right, which is pretty dangerous flop i mean you can discount five deuce and five seven because i make a 30 pre-flop so and then isn't this like the safest card in the deck close to eight nine and ten non-clubs would be the safest cards in my book and then somebody bets one third pot and you just don't go for it you just flat again this is such a stupid line it works in this in this case it works though i mean i really wonder what do you do when a river is a seven or an eight do you just shove as well just get the money in on the turn you know protect your hand get some value let's get some value with this recruit dilium stone cold that was also a regular king bet pot look at that calls good haha <laughs> not the high five around the room you got it i got it let's go five all right it's very easy Check, check, and a shove, I guess. All right, so he's going to do the work for us. I guess shoving is not that great because <laughs> somebody could, uh, somebody's going to shove a flush anyway. What? No. No way, dude. This was a classic case of you have something, I have something. Let's go. God, this is so sick because now my equity in the hand is 0%. You just go all in on the flop and get brutalized. At least it's good for your win rate. <laughs> Damn. All right, so that's just a sick ass setup. Uh, oh, good. I really get in the mix with all kinds of uh, crazy stuff, but I really like seeing it because, I mean, two months ago, uh, this is now. Oh, this is on my birthday, 29th of December. Good for you, getting a little present for daddy. Um, back then. I mean, two months ago, we didn't even see myself raise hands like this, and now we're already calling three bets and getting in a mix, so I'm really happy. Call. Oh, that would constitute as the nuts, guys. Nice bet sizing. <laughs> Min raise all in, and we're just going to get it against Ace King. Can't really blame him there. Really good flop. Plus the draws. He just goes for straight value on the turn. But really interesting to see that we're starting to play hands like this. Um, next week's going to be very interesting. 
because in the next video, so I'm gonna see if there's enough hands, I'm thinking so, and because Heads Up is one of my main games in the past, so I think that I'm gonna dedicate a full top 50 to the Heads Up games, um, also like I said earlier, if we end up running out of videos, we might uh, hate ourselves for not looking at more interesting hands, um, this is just... This is just really fun to look over. So next time, heads up, 600 no limit, aka 3.6. Uh, after that, we're going to be looking at 5.10. I think the tilt edition of this year will be very interesting because there will also be some PLO in there. Yes, my very first PLO hands, 5.10 PLO, no less. Um, and then we will um, go 5.10, 10.20, probably going to be part of the tilt sessions. I'm not entirely sure, so might have to look at my graph to see if that was actually tilt or not because if you play the first 10.20 hands... Uh, when your graph goes like that, it's probably tilt. If your graph goes like this, it's probably in a good period of time where you just took a shot. So we're going to be investigating a bit how the waters were and what our feeling was back then. Um, thank you guys again for watching. Please subscribe. It will help me a lot to put keep putting effort into YouTube. Also come up with new stuff. We have a lot of cool stuff planned, guys, but it really depends on... Uh, how much interest there is for it uh, and how much growth YouTube has uh, because the more it grows the more stuff we're going to put in it and you can help me grow it very much for free by liking subscribe and please leave a comment uh, down below if you have some stuff to say good or bad if it's bad please keep it constructive otherwise I'll just ignore it um, I don't mind criticism but at least we need to have a normal discussion about it right but you guys have been absolutely amazing 99% of the comments are incredible uh, or something very useful that we can work with. So please, I implore you, keep doing that. We're going to do some cool stuff. We're going to do giveaways, everything on YouTube in the future as well. Um, and like I said, we have a lot of plans. So see you next week. We're going to dive into Heads Up. Peace. <laughs>